Good morning. It is good to be gathered in God's house in this month of December, Christmas holidays coming up. It's an exciting time of year. Quick note on Wednesday night, I am excited. We'll be traveling through my hometown, so uh, I'm excited to do that. A little note on that, my, my wife heard through a neighbor of a young girl who was excited about a Christmas package CD of sorts that she had received, and she was like, oh, I wish I could just get another one. This came from a little girl in Myerstown, so thus the idea was birthed for Wednesday night, so come on out, we're going to have some trucks and wagons and pickup trucks with the tailgate down, people hopping off to hopefully hand out some Christmas gifts to people on the streets. The weather looks promising. So hopefully it it stays that way for Wednesday night. I'm excited. Hope to see you there. Before we jump in the message this morning, I'd like to sing a verse of that song, Come Gracious Spirit, and just think about the words as we sing, inviting the Holy Spirit to come among us this morning. Come gracious Spirit, heavenly dove, with light and comfort from above. Be thou art guardian, thou art guide, o'er every thought and step preside, o'er every thought and step preside. Many years ago when I was young, and had energy, energy for life, I had reached a momentous time in my life, and that was finishing high school. And wow, that felt good. Now I can get to the real life and move on. I committed to teaching school, and before I did that, I wanted to take a term at SMBI, Bible school, six weeks there. So I signed up for the spring um, term five, And six weeks I committed to living out there at SMBI and daily being in Bible classes and lessons and with other young people, it was good. And my goal over the six weeks was for really God to speak into my life because I was just entering what I thought was real life. And I was a teenager with zest and energy and thought I had the world by the tail. You ever feel like that, teenagers? And as I was there at the six weeks, I was really hoping for specific direction on where I should be going. At the Bible school, we had two guy deans who gave oversight to all this young energy in the guys' dorms, and they spoke into our lives, advice, words of wisdom, critique, blessing, and I was excited for them to really tell me what they saw in me. We got to the end of the six weeks. I went up to Tony and Kendall, and I said, hey, what do you got for me? You saw how I was the six weeks. They said, Zach, we got one word for you to think about. That's balance. You need balance. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Is there more? Uh, Zach, just, just work on the balance. And here I am many years later still working at balance. Balance is needed in life. Can you relate to the struggle to balance things in life? There's a need for it. Well, how do you know if something's balanced? What's the determining factor? How do you know if I'm balanced? Are you balanced? This morning, I brought a little object lesson along to illustrate balance. Anybody know what this is? Pan balance. Very good. A double pan balance scale. Now, how in the world does it work? See, it goes down. It's supposed to come back to about even. Hmm. I don't see an electronic readout. I don't know about you, but I'm used to scales like this. I put something on and it gives me a digital readout. That's my kind of scale. Balance scales were invented, came about many years ago. 
and simply what you put on one side, let's say this is a one pound weight, could determine how much you put on the other side. So let's see if this is a one pound weight. And they're supposed to be about even. This one weighs a little more. What you put on one side tells you how much to put on the other. A balance scale. Anybody ever use one of these? I don't see any hands. Okay. We don't really know what these are like. Now, stores, little shops back in the day, I think I remember one of these scales from Grenada, actually. They would put a, a weight on one side and it would determine how much rice, whatever they were buying, to put on the other side. Balance scale. The scale is only as accurate as its smallest weights. You see, if I say I want a half a pound, but I only have a one pound block, it's going to be hard for me to determine what the half pound is. Now, I could guess, but I couldn't get it exact. A balance scale is only good as its smallest weights. Once there was a farmer who bought a pound of butter from a baker, or who sold a pound of butter to the baker, and the baker obviously used the butter to make his bread and different uh, things that he made. One day, the baker said, questioned if the farmer was actually giving him a pound of butter. So he got his scales out and put it on. No, he was not getting the pound of butter that he was asking for. So, of course, he responded. He saw an imbalance, and he responded and said, I'm taking you to court. He took the farmer to court, went before the judge, explained his predicament, and the judge looked at the farmer and said, uh, Sir, how do you weigh your butter? Well, judge, I'm in a very primitive place, and I don't have much to measure, but I do have a scale. Okay, so how do you know what a pound of butter is? Oh, well, that's easy. Long before the baker started buying butter from me, I bought a pound of bread from the baker. So simply, when he started asking for butter, I put his pound of bread on one side to determine how much butter I'm going to give him. So, Your Honor, if anybody's wrong, it's the baker. <laughs> the baker sheepishly hung his head and walked out. You see, the baker was caught in the act. He was trying to twist something. He wanted to make it look like he was giving a pound, but he was not. You see, this speaks to humans. We want fairness. We want justice. We want things to be balanced. We don't like to see things out of whack. Back to my story. My mentors in my life told me I need balance. So what is balance in life? Well, about a year and a half later, I started to get to know my father-in-law better. And I thought, you know what? That's balance. You know, I'm this rash teenager with energy and zest for life, while Dennis, he thinks through his things. That's balance. I need that. That's what I want. That was my model of balance at that time. You see, some people, we have different natures. Some of us uh, tend to respond quickly and then sometimes regret how we responded. Some of us are used to thinking through things. We all have a different nature. There's a talk of needing balance in life today. Work and family. How do you balance it all? How do you balance church? How do I give them my time and care for my family? Busy in free time. How do I balance all the, the saying yes to things yet saying no to things? How do I balance this all? So this morning, I want us to see the need for balance. We like to see things balanced out. But I want us to remember that our response matters most. As we look at the need for balance, let's look at our response and remember that's what matters most. What does the Bible say about balance? You know any verses about balance? Adjust weight, very good. We're going to get to that in a bit. Turn to Proverbs 16.11. Actually, it talks about a just balance. Proverbs 16.11. 
And every time I go to Proverbs, I'm amazed. This is the wisest man who ever lived. And he's stating these wise sayings, wisdom that he learned in his life. Proverbs 16.11 says, A just weight and balance are who? The Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. And it's given in the context here of kings and a judge, if you study the verses around, meaning the judge is going to decide the outcome. And it says here, a just weight and balance are the Lord's. The Lord knows justice. He is the balance. He is the just balance. And it implies that there is a need for justice, but it is the Lord's. The second part of the verse says, all the weights of the bag are his work. Only his weights bring perfection or bring balance. The Lord sets the standard for fairness and balance. He is the judge. Let's remember that as we talk about balance. Many times we see imbalances. We think are imbalances. But the Lord ultimately is the judge of what is just and what is balanced. Too many times we shift the weights or swing the pendulum. And this morning I'm going to talk about a pendulum, or refer to a pendulum as as well. Imagine a stick hanging down from this center bar. And if this bar is balanced, you can almost picture a grandfather clock. You know, a little pendulum just swinging back and forth. Okay? If it is balanced, it is going to swing evenly back and forth. But imagine if this is down to one side, the pendulum is is going to lean that way. So this pendulum or balances, too many times we as humans respond to imbalances that we see and we swing the pendulum or we shift the weights to one side to counteract. We try to do our own thing to bring about balance. But what this verse is saying here in Proverbs 16, 11, the just weights and balances, whose are they? They're the Lord's. Justice, balance, comes ultimately from God. Leviticus 19, 36 says, You shall have just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hin, uh, forms of measurements that the Israelites were to use. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. This was in context coming after the Lord was giving the laws to Moses to pass on to his people. And it was pretty specific on the things that they were supposed to do. And he gets to the end and he says, okay, you need a just balance. You need to be balanced out. Don't swing from one extreme to the other. Follow the law that I have given you but have balance. He warns the Israelites of their tendency to be off balance. This speaks to human tendency of extremes. Another point on balance. Jesus recognized that we tend to be extremists. We see one thing and we want to react to bring it back into balance. It's not always clear on how we should respond. And so we want to swing it back. Ever drive on a snowy road? Do you like the drifting and the donut process? Yeah, Joseph, you're shaking your head. Now, me, of course, in my little blue car, I call it little blue, at the age of 17 and 18, I thought this was pretty fun, learning how to handle these snowy roads. And Dad would say, don't overreact. If you're sliding, don't quickly try to overreact. Just go with it. Think about the direction of the car, that your car is moving. All right, I'm learning all this. This is fun. It snowed just about an inch on the road. Perfect for having fun. So I'm out on the road having fun. Well, I get to a turn, and I thought I was having fun until I overreacted and slid into the ditch. (laughs) And somebody had to come pull me out. I hung my head. Okay. You see, the human tendency is to overreact. Respond with an extreme when we see imbalance in life. Jesus warns of that. Have balance. 
Proverbs 11.1 1 says, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Obviously, a false balance, back to the baker, that is an abomination. And that is a human tendency to make life look good, to make life look balanced, but to do our own thing. To illustrate this, I'd like to role play a little bit. Kyrie, could you come up here for me? And Kyrie, this morning we're going to imagine that you did a job for me. Let's say you, you helped shovel my car out when I got stuck. Okay? And I wanted to reimburse you for that. So this morning we're going to say, let's just imagine that each of these are a pound. Okay? So I'm going to give you two pounds of gold. You good with that? Now, I don't have real gold this morning, unfortunately, but I do have some money, okay? So we are going to weigh out. I'm going to put a jar on here to catch the money so it doesn't go all over the place. And I'm going to give you two pounds to compensate for your help for me. You good with that? Now, you, you let me know when we're pretty close to even. I'm still getting used to using these balance scales, but we'll give it a whirl. Are we there yet? You sure? Okay. Whatever you say. We there yet? Still, still not there. I'm going to go broke. There? Nope. Still want more. Man, you're picky. Hey, you're trying to take too much now. You want a little more? Okay, you want a little more? You good with that? You good with that? That's fair? That's balanced out? I'm good. Hold out your hands. Let me give you this money. Oh, you better get two hands up here. I don't want you to spill it. Yep. Okay. You good with that? You feel you've been treated fairly? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for what you did for me. You may go back to your seat. All right. You guys were the observers. Was that a fair transaction? Sean's say, shaking his head. Anybody think it was a fair transaction? Now, we're going to imagine that this was a, a pound of gold, or a, a pound, so it's two pounds, okay? Sean, what's not fair about it? Aha. Uh -huh. You caught me. Kyrie, the cup weighs something. You were ripped off. This speaks to the human tendency. I tried to make Kyrie feel like he got treated fairly, but I was hoping he didn't catch that this glass jar weighed something. That's our human tendency. We try to do our own thing so we looked good. We looked good and balanced to other people. But we put our own little stipulation in there to try to get our own way. That's an abomination, as Proverbs says here an abomination a false balance is an abomination to the Lord humans want to make things look how they want that's not balance we're looking at some Bible verses on balance another one James 1 8 says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways this speaks to imbalance double minded man jumping from one thing to the next one idea, maybe trying to impress this group of people and coming over here and changing to impress the other group. That's imbalance. Am I right in saying that Jesus wants balance? Are we seeing that? And the human tendency of extremes and to make things look how we want. Let's look at a couple stories where we see balance or imbalance. Let's go to Moses. Children, I need your help. Moses was a little baby, and I heard he was put in a basket. Do you know who found him when he was floating down the river? Spencer? Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter found him, and he went back to live with his mom for a little bit. Did he stay living with his real mom? Where did he go? Tanner. Where did he live? Travis? Ah, 
So after he lived with his mom for a little bit, he went to Pharaoh's house. And this was the king's house. You want to live in the king's house? Yeah, I would too. He lived in the king's house till a certain age. And one day he goes out because he knew that the Israelites were actually his relatives. Okay? He goes out one day, and what does he see? Spencer. He sees an Egyptian and an Israelite fighting. Oh. Do you think that's balanced? Is that just? No. That's imbalanced. Moses saw something that was off balance. And he wanted to put it back into balance. So what did he do? He killed the Egyptian. That's fair. Right? Or not. He thought that was fair. He thought that was a proper response to the imbalance that he saw, but it wasn't. He went home. He came out the next day, and another Israelite said, Huh, you're going to kill me like you did the Egyptian. And of course, you know the story. He had to run. Do you think Moses learned a lesson from that? I think he did. Because if you jump ahead a couple years, when they're in the wilderness, he's the leader of these Israelites who are complaining. And Korah comes along and he says, Moses, who do you think you are? You're trying to lead this people? Did God tell you to? Is that fair treatment of a leader? Not really. Moses could have responded to the imbalance that he was treated with by saying, Korah, I rebuke you. He could have shut that down. Instead, what does he say? He says, all right, Korah, you and your group of men, meet me tomorrow. God's going to decide. It's almost like he stopped and counted to 10. He said, let's let God take care of this. There was an imbalance. He was being treated unfairly. Yet I think he looked back and remembered, you know what? Me responding rashly is not going to balance out. God has another set of balances. Then there's the story of Mary and Martha. We go to that one when we talk about balance. Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha's scrambling around. Martha sees Mary's imbalance and comes to Jesus and says, Come on, Jesus. Why are you letting Mary do that? Again, it speaks to the giftings that Mary was gifted with and Martha was. Martha did not respond, respond right to the imbalances that she saw. And Jesus says, calm down, Martha. There's a need for both. Yeah, we need to get ready for supper, but we also need to sit at the feet of Jesus. Martha, calm down. There's a need for balance. Jesus is walking through a cornfield on the Sabbath. And of course, they're hungry. So his disciples start taking corn off and eating it. The Pharisees see it. And of course, the Pharisees are looking for everything that they can pick apart in Jesus. They come to Jesus and say, why are you eating on the Sabbath? Why are you doing this? Jesus, calm down. There's balance. Have you not read? David ate. The priest did too. Yes, you're trying to stick to your law. The Pharisees were all about the law. But Jesus says, there's another side to it. There's balance. Another, th- another beautiful illustration of balance is the woman caught in adultery. This woman had sinned. And this group of men caught her and drug her to Jesus and said, Jesus, this man, this woman committed adultery. And they had stones. They were ready to stone her. And Jesus says, what does Jesus do? He's great. Wonderful response. Like he stops and counts to ten. He kneels down. He's just writing in the sand. They're shouting their accusations. Calm down. There's a balance. He says, all right, if you don't have any sin, stone her. Well, of course, they all dropped their stones and walked away. They couldn't say that they were sinless. But his response is the balance that we need in life. The balance of truth and grace. He responds to the woman and says, you're forgiven. That's grace. But there's also truth. Just because you're forgiven doesn't mean you can go turn around and do the same thing. 
don't sin anymore. There's a balance. Truth and grace. We're going to get to in a bit. Jesus portrayed that well. Frank Reed said humans are typically out of balance. They tend towards all love or all truth. It's all this way or either it's all love and anything goes. Proverbs 16.6. If you're still at Proverbs 16.11, go back up a couple verses. And this speaks to Jesus' just weights or Jesus' balance scale. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. There is imbalances in our world. And the only way that we can get rid of it, iniquity, is another word for sin. Or I would like to use the word imbalance. The only way we can combat imbalance is with mercy and truth. And Jesus portrayed that so relevantly. In John 1.14, it says he was full of what? Grace and truth. That balance between love and sticking to the law. A balance of truth and grace. And make sure these are showing the right way, not upside down. Truth and grace is what balances life. Sticking to the truth Yet there is grace, there is forgiveness, there is love. And that is what Jesus portrayed. And back to our pendulum, this pendulum's hanging down. What's going to happen when we see imbalances? If it's balanced, it's going to have a response of truth and grace and swing back and forth. It's going to be a mixture of the two. One or the other is not the cure. It's both. People often react harshly or rashly, resulting in the balance or pendulum being leaning to one side. Job 31.6 says, Let me be weighed in a just balance, and let God know my integrity. Job said that after he had a long conversation with his friends, and all he wanted was to be tr- to, for God to judge him to see if he was in a just balance. You see, when people respond wrongly, sometimes we question them. So if I was to walk up to Joseph this morning and slap him on the face, what do you think his reaction would be? Joseph, what would you do? Probably slap me back, right. And all of you back there would be like, yes, got him back. Is that what Jesus said? Obviously, we know. Turn the other cheek, right? Our human response is to react to the injustices that we see. And we would justify Joseph saying, yeah, get him back. But Jesus' response is different. Turn the cheek. And you see, when, I see, when we see Joseph responding like that, we right away saw why he, why he slapped me, because I slapped him first. When people respond wrongly, they're often a little right because there's a need for justice. Their life was wrecked. A loved one dies. So they're responding with bitterness, anger. They're not responding right to the imbalance that happened in their life. They respond harshly, rashly, without stopping to count to ten. Sometimes you just need to be somebody's punching bag because of something else they experienced. When we understand that, I can then help Joseph say, yeah, Joseph, I know you want to slap me back. But Jesus said, there's a better way. And we can help walk with somebody to a place of balance between grace and truth. Remember, our human tendency is to react. uh, Driving on the snowy roads, We tend to overcorrect. We like to put our jars on, our own weights, to make things look how we want. But I want us to remember this morning that balance 
is responding to the imbalances that we see. And it's remembering that our response to those imbalances matter most. Are you, are you seeing a need for balance this morning? Our human tendency to be off balance in many areas of life. Now you're thinking, yeah, Zach, I know there's a need for balance. But what about the specifics? The everyday stuff that we face where we need balance. I would like to look at some areas of imbalance. Justice versus mercy. If you look at politics today, (coughs) it's easy to get caught up in how things are. We see imbalances with one party or the other. We might see imbalances with the court cases that are going on right now, and we'd like to get caught up on which side is right and which is not. But Joseph's response to his brothers was, am I in the place of God? Before we quickly jump to one side or the other, do we have truth and grace? That is a balanced response to society, politics today. Another area of imbalance is when we see an error or a problem in somebody. If Jairus is doing something that I just don't agree with and I don't like, I tend to start looking at Jairus as the problem. Like, Jairus, really? But it's not him, it's, it's what he's doing. And when there's an error in somebody, we tend to quickly look at the person and downplay the person. But we need to look at the problem. Responding with grace and truth, recognizing that they are an individual. There is truth. They might be off balance. But to respond to those errors with truth and grace. Did you ever hear the thing, count to ten before you respond? Or count to five, whatever number it is. As I was sitting, getting ready for the message, I, I took out my hands and, well, I guess I don't often put out my two hands and count to ten. Do that with me this morning. Put out your two hands and just imagine you're counting to ten, okay? When you get to ten, what do you got? You got two open palms, right? As I was sitting there, ah, that's neat. And this is one area that's going to help me. Am I balanced? I got two scales. Do I have grace? Do I have truth? What am I going to respond with? And am I going to respond with the truth? I'm right. Am I going to respond with too much grace and turn the other eye? Or am I going to respond with truth and grace? Stop and count to ten. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Another area of imbalance is Bible study. Sometimes I have a sermon I want to preach, and so I go find a verse to prove my, prove my point. And that's not all wrong, but that can be dangerous. If we have this idea and we want to pull out, oh, this verse, oh yeah, that proves my point, I'm right. Bible study needs to be taken in context. What is the whole Bible, what is the whole story trying to tell us? And when we see the possible imbalance of that, we, that, that should push us to a lifestyle of study. Am I balanced in my view of the scriptures? Am I, or am I only making the verses mean and say what I want them to? A possible area of imbalance. Another possible area of imbalance is responding to critique. When somebody critiques me, uh, I find it hard to respond well. I want to justify myself. But responding well to critique is responding with truth and grace. What truth might that individual be saying that I need to listen to? Don't quickly jump to the opposite side to try to, imbal- or to, try to balance out the imbalance that we see. Another one is busyness and rest. You ever feel like you're too busy? Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're too restful? <laughs> Maybe not. But we err on the tendency of being too busy. Huh. Another busy week. A busy this. I need a vacation. And so we go on vacation and we come back from vacation. Huh. I need another Monday to recover from the vacation. You ever feel like that on a Monday? After being gone for the weekend? Yeah. I think that's speaking to our human tendency of extremes. We're busy. Ha, let's go on vacation. 
rest. And then we're back in the busyness again. Oh, let's go to rest. Can we incorporate practices in our daily, weekly life that gives us more of a balance between busyness and rest? Learning to say no. Learning to prioritize the necessary things. Or is that just me? Do I tend to be imbalanced in that area? It's daily, it's weekly. Are we finding balance in busyness and rest? Another thing is material possessions. So we're supposed to care for our families, right dads? Yep. But it's also, it also says you're supposed to sell everything you have and give to the poor. Okay. Okay, Jesus, what are you trying to get at? Just tell me one thing so I know what to do. That needs balance. And sometimes I think that if I give this or give this amount of time, that gives me the opportunity, the privilege, the right to have this or that or go on this vacation or buy this. Is that how it works? Balance in material possessions. Caring well for the things God has given you yet passing some on. There's also a balance in child discipline. I'm so glad for my wife on this. I tend to be more the truth side of, of, the, of the balance and Ruthie tends to be more in the grace side. And it's good for it, us to counteract, to balance out each other. But dads and moms, there's a need for both. And sometimes it takes more truth <laughs> And sometimes it takes more grace. And we need the balance. I don't have a one answer fits all this morning. But don't give up. There's a need for both. There's also a need for balance in technology, social media. And I know every time you hear that, it's like, well, my phone's good. I need it. It's a tool. Yeah. But there's also truth in that it can be a hindrance. Are we balanced in that area? Just because I read my Bible in the morning, does that give me the right to spend X amount of time? Are we balanced? That's what I'm pointing at. I don't have answers. I'm just proposing areas of imbalance. Can we be balanced? Traditions is another one. And the list could go on and on. There's many areas for a need for balance. Do we have a balance of truth and grace? Do you remember the story of Belshazzar, the king, to Daniel? He's having a party, and what happens? The hand appears on the wall. Do you remember the middle word and what the interpretation of that was? You are put on the balances. You are put on the balance scale, Belshazzar, and found wanting. If you and I were to be placed on the balance scale this morning, would we be found wanting? Would we tend to one extreme or the other? All Jesus asks for is balance. Life is not always clear, but he wants us to respond with balance into the many areas of life that come our way. The pendulum should be swinging freely between truth and grace. Truth and grace. Back to the groups of people. I said there's two groups of people by nature. I tend to be more on the responding quickly type. There's other who tend to be on the thinking it through. Do you know we both need balance? I need to stop and think sometimes. But there's also people who need to step up and say things, make a decision sometimes. We need balance. That's what I'm saying. Mercy, grace, is not just turning the eye so we don't have to deal with something. Mercy is showing love, grace, truth. There's a need for truth and justice and there's some prophets among us who see it this way. And there's a need for that. But when we respond with truth that tries to make me look better than somebody else, back to the problem I see in Jairus, 
If I look at him and say, I lay out the problems that I see in him, and I'm doing it in an attitude to make me look better, that's wrong. That's when truth does not work. When we present truth to somebody, it should hurt us. We should feel the pain. That's balance. Another thing to remember, when we, res- when we take advice from somebody, <laughs> remember that they may be imbalanced. If I want to uh, go to somebody who agrees with me, I know Sean's on my side, so I'm going to go to Sean and I'm going to say, hey, Sean, what, what do you think about this? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Daryl's off his rocker, okay? But if I know Daryl's going to give me an opposing opinion, I go to Daryl and say, hey, Daryl, this is how I see it. Oh, you see it that way. You see, remember, if we go to people who just agree with us, that's going to put us even more on an imbalance. I'm talking about balance this morning. Do we see that our response, the answer isn't always clear, but Jesus just asked that we respond with truth and grace. Our response matters most. My personal thing that I'm working on right now is the jar. I like to put my jar on the scale to make it look like life is balanced. But I'm just sometimes try to cover up and make it look good. Are we honest? Do we lay it out there how it is? Say, am I in balance? Or would we put our own things on to try to make us look like we're in balance in life? Life in all isn't always clear, but Jesus wants a balanced response. Jesus wants us to respond with truth and grace. Turn, me, turn with me to one verse in closing. 2 Peter 3, verse 17. 2 Peter 3, 17. He's talking of the coming of the Lord. And he gets to the end, his final words. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, Okay, you know all these things. Beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Jesus wants a balanced people. And we can only find that by going to him, a relationship with him. And Peter is saying here, don't be caught up with all the errors, all the things that are going on. You're going to quickly become imbalanced. And when you do that, you lose your steadfastness. And he's saying here, don't do that because I want you to be steadfast. Balanced people are steadfast. Our response matters most when we see areas of imbalance. How do you respond? Are we balanced? Do we see a need for change? Remember, our response matters most and let us respond with truth and grace as we see areas of imbalance in life. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer and a closing song then, and you will be dismissed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, and I thank you for somebody in my life to say that I need balance. And we recognize the need for balance this morning, and we want that. Help us to go to you Remembering that your weights are what balances it out. Not our rash responses, but responding with truth and grace is how iniquity will be purged. Help us to look to you for that model of balance. Take us as we go from here. Help us to be a light for you, responding with balance this week. In Jesus' name, amen.